Hello everyone, hope you're doing well. It's time to have a look at the events which are going on around the Defender of the Fadland Day, which obviously is the Russian holiday in the 23rd of uh, Feb February every year, uh, so tomorrow. There's a bunch of different tournaments which are going on, there's a bunch of vehicles that they brought back, and also uh, they've brought back some shields uh, and created a collection. So we'll start off with the tournaments. There's varying ones uh, going basically from the 25th of February all the way to the 2nd of March, and basically um, if you win uh, the tournament uh, you get yourself a starter pack and then also a a bunch of GE and other prizes that are on offer. Some of the prize pools for these are around about 70,000 GE, some of them are more modest, around 5,000 GE, but overall it's still nice to see. And if you win, you get a nice little bonus, obviously the nice decal and also one of the starter packs, which is always nice uh, overall. There are 16 tournaments and over 184,000 G that's available for them, so if you are interested in the competitive side of things, make sure to get yourself sorted on that. The other idea that they've put forward is now there is a shields decoration collection. So just like a lot of other decorations and also decals, if you collect all the shields, you'll get a special shield, which is basically how this goes. There is a new shield, which is going to be on offer between the 22nd and the 27th, and this uh, will be the Pelter Shield decoration. Basically, you'll have to win five battles using USSR vehicles, uh, rank three or higher, 70%, as always, and get yourself the Pelter Shield. And if you have all of the previous shields from the other events that they've done in the past, you'll get yourself the Heraldic Shield. Uh, which is pretty cool as well. I don't know if any of the shields are on the marketplace or if they're going to do a little uh, box for it. It does say that there is a box in the item shop for GE that you can purchase it in, so if you want to complete the collection and missed older shields, you can get that. So technically there are two shields on offer, which is pretty nice. They're also bringing back some Golden Eagle vehicles from the 22nd of February to the 27th of February. Now, if you want to pick up anything on the Guardian store, including um, uh, the actual Golden Eagles themselves, uh, you can use my partner code and get yourself a discount and also support the channel at the same time. The vehicles they brought back are the KV-1E, the T-34 First Guard Tank Brigade, the PE-2205 Peshka, and also the IL-2M Avenger. We'll go through each of them and give my opinions. If you want a quick uh, one, KV-1E, very good. T-34 First, very good. IL-2M, good in aerialistic. PE-2, useless. Anyway, let's get into the reviews. So the first vehicle is the T-34 First Guard Tank Brigade. This one is a pretty standard T-34. It is at rank 2, which kind of sucks, uh, because it means that you can't use it for all the dailies, and uh, it does have standard Tetris counterparts, obviously the 1941 being basically the copy of it. It has the F-34 cannon, which is fantastic. Uh, it has good mobility, it has very trolley armor, as many people will know about when it comes to the T-34, and overall is a solid premium. It works really well, doesn't really do anything badly um, as a vehicle, which is what, you know, you really want from it. It has, uh, you know, artillery support, it has nice rounds. Are they the best penning rounds in the world? No, not necessarily. A lot of people ask me, which round do I take? Do I take the MD-8 or the MD-5? Uh, I take the MD-8 um, because of the fact that even though this one has more explosive filler, if this one pens, it destroys everything inside anyway, so there's not really much point in taking the other one. So always in this scenario, I would take the more pen just because uh, you want to be able to deal the damage, right? But you don't want to take something like the 350 SP uh, because you just won't do any post-pen damage. So yeah, the MD-8 fuse is the way to go on this vehicle. But everything, every little factor about it is quite nice. The only real weakness on it is the turret cheeks themselves, and they can be quite hard to hit, especially with ping differences and also moving around. This is like a very bog standard nice vehicle, you know, for the Soviet tech tree. And it just has a really good lineup around it. The KV-1 L11, obviously the two T-34s, the KV-2 if you want to throw it in there, and then of course some of the other vehicles as well. I would say this is a great one, especially if you're starting off the Soviet tech tree. My only little gripe with this is the simple fact that it's ranked 2, so it can't be used 
for all the dailies and specials. The next vehicle is the KV-1E. This is one of the most annoying vehicles in the game to fight alongside the KV-1B. The KV-1E is one of those vehicles that has additional armor on top of the KV-1 platform. It basically has these extra plates on the side, uh, which pretty much means uh, that this vehicle can tank a lot more rounds that uh, you would be used to. It's an extra 30 millimeters, and uh, if you get the shot slightly wrong with even stuff like the long barrel 75 from the German gun, you won't be able to go through this and then also the plate on the back. That means the lower glacis is the one to go for, but as you can see, that also has some armor on top of it as well. So really fun and enjoyable facing this thing so annoying uh, in general it's also got really good mobility as a vehicle and uh, generally can uh, go around the place and kind of do what it wants obviously it's a heavy tank so if you get fully upped it's not going to be in the best position but at any other BR, I would say this thing does incredibly well. It doesn't have the greatest turret rotation, which is uh, makes it a little bit lacking. And the major issue with this, even though it has really good armor and really good mobility, is the gun's not the best. Uh, it's only a standard F-32, uh, which, you know, uh, this one has, of course, the F-34 on it. So the F-32 only pens uh, 88-77-45 with the MD-8 rounds, so you're going to really have to pick your targets as as well as you can because if you face stuff like certain heavy tanks uh, from you know enemy forces such as KV-1Bs from the Germans you'll be struggling to get through it uh, so that will be a bit of a problem everything else though should be fine just aim for the flat parts and learn where the weak spots are and you'll be all good the KV-1E is a fantastic vehicle there's nothing really else to say. It is also rank 3, so you can do all your dailies, you can do all your specials in it, and everything like that. Also, you have the SU-152, which is really fun uh, when you can get it rolling. The KV-1S uh, for a little bit more mobility, and the T-34 STZ and the T-34 1942 as a lineup plus CAS. It's an insane lineup the Soviets have at this BR, and if you're a person who likes doing the Battle Pass stuff or likes doing event stuff, the KV-1E is fantastic for it. The IL-2M Avenger is another one which has a standard tech tree counterpart in the IL-2M, so if you want to kind of get to know this thing, uh, you can uh, pretty much just play it in the tech tree and see how you feel about the IL-2M Type 3, which is here, and the IL-2M 1943. Um, the IL-2M Avenger has access to the 23mm, which are super good in aerialistic, not just because they can take out of the planes, but also because they can pop medium slash heavy tanks from the side and the back, meaning that you're a very effective ground pounder in this vehicle. This means that in, um, you know, dailies where you have to destroy stuff with strike aircraft or maybe get uh, Terror of the Skies um, or, you know, Hero of the Skies getting anti-mech or, you know, something like that, the IL-2M can really step up and do a lot of work, especially since it's rank 3. The 23s are really nice on this. The 762s are a good backup. It also gets a 12.7 Berezin in the back, which for some reason really likes setting fire to things. And also the ordnance options, even though not the best that you've seen, are incredibly varied, meaning that you can bring along a bunch of different ones if you want to. I think they even added a few more recently with the 25 kilo bombs. You can bring up to 250s, uh, so if you want to use this in ground forces, you can do two. It can actually work very effectively in ground forces as a general vehicle to use. Um, I've used it many times to great effect, and uh, yeah, it's just in a lovely place um, in general. This, if you like doing, you know, once again, daily or specials, is really good and really relaxing to play. And if you want to grind out the aviation tech tree of the Soviets, you can do so too, all the way up to rank 5. I'd say there's a lot of uh, damp squibs in the Soviet tech tree when it comes to certain planes around this, which can be really annoying to grind out. Um, so I would get the Avenger just so I could kind of bypass them and kind of chill, maybe read a book while playing it and they're realistic. And if you want to use it in ground, it works too. Air Arcade, obviously, and Naval, it's all useful overall. It also is quite a efficient dogfighter because it has a really good first and second turn because of a massive elevator on it. It. But after that, you'll probably get clapped. Overall, a very, very good machine. The last vehicle on offer is the PE2205. Now, for me, uh, I've always really not enjoyed the PE2s or the Peshkas because of their lack of armament. 
I feel like if you have a look at like a TU2 or a TU1 or similar cast vehicles even around this BR, uh, the PE2s just don't have enough going for them in terms of ordnance itself. It can bring four 250s, which is quite nice, or 2500s. So in a ground forces sense, if you are uh, very good at aiming them, then you know you'll be able to bonk a bunch of people. But you need air superiority because you can't defend yourself in this thing because the guns that it has, it has two 12.7 UBs and then also two 762s. The UBs do uh, point backwards, so can be useful in a way. Um, but generally, you know, you won't be able to kind of uh, support yourself very well. Then in the front it has one 12.7 and, and one 7.62, one here and one here, which obviously is no good at all. So the vehicle itself, the way that I see this one unfortunately, is I just wish it had more boom. I wish it had a little bit more to it. And that's how I feel about a lot of frontline and a lot of dive bombers in the game. They just don't really fit the metas in the different game modes too well. In ground, it has a slight place, and in naval, it has a slight place. But at the end of the day, I would actually take the IL-2M Avenger over it, just because of the fact that it gets similar ordnance options, and also isn't huge, and uh, doesn't maneuver very well. So... The IL-2M is actually better to play than the PE-2205, even though the PE-2205 is two BR brackets above it, and that's always been the weird one with the PE-2, so this would be a not recommend. As always though, I hope you have a wonderful day, and I'll see you next time. I'd just like to thank Millie Draper, Juan the Panda, Nick R. Kupila, Carrion Crow, Gus Irenicus, Pyman, Merciless Reaper, Orange Tail, Teddy, Daniel Stanton, Moxie B. Young, Peter Grayling, Jerry Provolt, Bereen, Alan Hacker, Sem Arslan, Uncle Bean, Derek R., and Lafouche for supporting the channel.